Hello everybody, I'm M. Welcome to my channel where we're still cooking, still screaming, still crying, still trapped in lockdown, but not so much following recipes for the time being. I will get back to that eventually, but right now I'm feeling a certain sense of ennui in following <laughs> recipes, so I'm just going about cooking things that I want to eat and feel like eating and also want to share. So this go around, we are cooking sarma. For those of you who are not in the know, sarma is an Eastern European dish which starts off with a whole cabbage head which you've got to pickle over the course of a few weeks. And I did that maybe three weeks ago when quarantine first started. What I did was I took a whole head of cabbage, I gave it a good scrub, and then I put it into a container filled with some water, salt, sugar, and then I added some bay leaf, juniper berries, and also white pepper. In my research, I found out that the Balkans do this throughout winter. And obviously it's not winter in Malaysia, we don't get winter ever. I'm told that in order for it to be authentic, it has to be stinky cabbage. The first time I made this, I had actually also pickled a whole cabbage. And then I decided that it was a good idea to get some pickling done since we're all stuck at home anyway. Recently, I've been running my oven an awful lot. And when I do that, I realize that it ups the temperature a bit in the balcony where the pickle is happening. When the temperature goes up, fermenting happens faster, I'm assuming. I'm not a scientist, don't quote me on that. It's just common sense. So I noticed that pickling was happening a lot faster than I was hoping. Oh god, I have to make the sarma, otherwise the cabbage is probably going to go bad. Not great at pickling. I do it once in a while and I'm feeling particularly domestic. The thing with cabbage, or basically anything you're going to pickle, is that if you're not careful, you will see things growing on top. A good example of this is fungus. You don't want any fungus or mold or, you know, that's not good for you. I don't think I'm really an authority on pickling, but I what I can say is that look up some recipes online. I will link you to the one that I use. Ultimately, what you want to do is make sure that you keep all the air out of your pickling solution. You want to keep whatever you're pickling under the water. So if anything does happen and you do see mold growing on top, eh, it differs. Uh, some people say you can scrape it off and leave it. Some people say you should throw the whole batch. I would just scrape it off and leave it. You want to just use your sense of taste. Taste the brine and see if it if it tastes like sauerkraut, then you're probably fine. If it doesn't, then throw it out, start a new batch. It's probably not a good time to get sick because finding a doctor is gonna be a pain in the So, once you have your pickled cabbage head, it's just a matter of mixing around some fillings, wrapping it up, and then cooking it for a few hours until your whole house smells delicious. So, we start off with the aforementioned cabbage head, which I have soaked in a little bit of water to get rid of some of the sourness. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. I found that it was a little bit too sour, so I tried to basically temper it a little bit. You want to be very, very gentle when stripping the leaves off. Just remember that the more you break, the less leaves you have for wrapping up your filling. So I'm just being very, very slow, very, very skittish about it. So you'll notice that as you get deeper and deeper, obviously the leaves are going to get smaller and I'll show you later how you're going to maximize the leafage so that you can make as many wraps as possible. But don't worry about not using up the little bits of leaf that are the innermost pieces because what we're going to do is we're going to be cutting them up really really fine and putting them into the stew itself. So before we start wrapping, we're going to have to take the core stems out from the leaf. So the easiest way to do it is just to layer them together and to slice through. You're going to make sure you preserve as much of the soft leaves as possible and get rid of the stems. So try to be careful. It takes a little bit of patience, but it's worth it in the end, I promise. So the leaves aren't exactly very delicate at this point. They're still quite crunchy. So I like to think I did this pickle really, really well. Hope the self phrase. Next up, we're going to make the filling. So that starts off with an onion. 
which you're going to dice. It doesn't matter how fine or how coarse it is, just do it with as much patience as you have. And then smash some garlic, which you're gonna mince up afterwards. And I like doing this because every time I see Julia Child do it, she goes like, WHAM! Which is really cute. So just mince it up. Again, it doesn't need to be super fine or anything. Nobody really cares. This is sort of like a peasant dish, which is perfect because I am a peasant. You can saute that really, really quick. You don't really want to brown it, you just want to soften it. And once that's soft enough, you're going to leave it to cool in a dish. And then just brown some bacon bits. You could also alternatively use treaty bacon, but cut it up. So I'm using a combination of beef and pork for my filling. You could just use all beef, you could use all pork. It's really up to you. This is that sort of like easy going dish that I really really like. And again, I'm pretty sure this is not traditional. So Balkans avert your eyes. Add in your bacon. And then add in some rice. The first time I did this, I tried this with sticky rice, which also is really, really good. This is regular rice. And then I added a bit of dried sage because I like the flavor. Salt generously. And then season with pepper. Now get in there with your hands. Just, just get in there with your hands. It's fine. And then mix it around. So that everything basically just coheres together into a ball. I mean you don't obviously you don't need to like mix it half to death. As long as everything is well combined, you're fine. And then we're gonna get rolling. Well not rolling per se, we're gonna get wrapping. So this is easy basically, you just get a tablespoon of filling, you put it into the leaf, fold over the ends that you have cut. And then basically fold in the edges and then just roll it in towards the thin end of the leaf which should stick nicely and this is actually really really fun and soothing work it's like sort of like making ravioli for me anyway it's like nice easy comforting work and at the end of it, you know you're going to have something really, really delicious to sink your teeth into. Always worth it. So there we go, get a spoonful of filling. Fold in the cut section, tuck in the edges, and then again, roll towards the thin end of the leaf. And lay it down easy so in the case of running out of large leaves you can basically put together two smaller leaves and use the first leaf and the second leaf that overlaps a little bit and you fold them in tuck them in at the sides and then you wrap it up this is obviously not going to hold together as well as the whole leaves, but if you're careful, it should stick nicely. Now we're going to start with the stew portion. This basically is half an onion, which you're going to saute really, really quickly in some olive oil. Add the rest of your filling uh, if you have any left over. Some people put in salted smoked beef here or pork. I don't really think that's necessary. So I'm going to saute that really really nice. That's a very very nice to do there. And then you're going to put in your shredded cabbage or well, the rest of it anyway or half of it. Give it a quick stir. Add 
add a little bit of water that starts to stick to the base. The idea is that you're basically building a base upon which to lay your cabbage parcels. And this is definitely not traditional. I added uh, a box of tomato because I like it. I like the flavor of tomato and I think it really adds to the overall texture and color of the dish. You don't have to do it. If this bugs you, I'm sorry. I'm gonna add a little bit of bacon and what I did off screen was also to add maybe two tablespoons of brown sugar because when you get all that sourness from the cabbage and also the tomato, I mean obviously it's a lot of flavor, you get a lot of umami from both of them, but you're also gonna need a little bit of sugar just to temper it. So now you're going to layer your cabbage parcels into the pot. And this is not going to fit in one layer, uh, which is why we are, have reserved a little bit of the cabbage and bacon from before. And you'll see that what we're going to do is basically create two layers. So this is like sort of a vegetable stew lasagna kind of deal. And you add in the second layer. Obviously, I'm not cooking for like a giant family of eight people. So this is good enough for a few meals, leftovers. And I added in a chicken stock cube. And again, not traditional, but I like a little bit of oregano here. And then you're going to top it off with water. Bring it to a simmer and then cover. That's it. You basically leave it for the next two hours and your house is going to smell amazing this whole time. And once it's cooked, you should see that the cabbage is tender and the meat inside, the filling inside is cooked. And then you're gonna plate up. I would say maybe three per person per meal. Still definitely good enough for, this pot is probably good enough for about four people. So be gentle with it. You don't want your wraps falling apart. And I like to top it with a little bit of sour cream. And after that, garnish with parsley. If you don't have parsley, dill leaf also works, or chives. And we're gonna get a cross section. And there you go. This is really good. So this sarma thing, I really, really do like it, which is why I've cooked it twice now in a very short amount of time. It's one of those things that to me feels just comforting and homey, inspires a sense of comfort and love and affection. You can use a regular cabbage, just you just kind of have to like cook the leaves ahead of time so that they're softer and pliable. I do foresee myself making this recipe a lot more in coming days, which means I'm gonna be continually pickling more cabbages. You're gonna really have to plan ahead to get the right amount of sourness in your cabbage. So yeah, I really do see myself cooking it more and more and I hope you all give it a try because it really is absolutely delicious. I know it's not traditional, but I also do think that if you scoop up the sarma leftovers if you have leftovers you could scoop it up scatter some cheese and breadcrumbs on top and toast it and it's probably going to be really really good because cheese and tomatoes what could possibly go wrong right i also have eaten it cold straight out of the fridge don't judge me but they're also really good like that as with most stews it is much better if you leave it to marinate in the fridge overnight it's also fine frozen and reheated it's really really good trust me on this give it a try be good be kind to one another keep watching if you like this video and if you would like to follow me on more adventures uh, while i'm cooking while i am trying new things while i am repurposing my leftovers then give us a like subscribe to the channel and hit that bell button over there so you can get updates on whenever i post a new video until then i hope you'll stay safe take care and i'll see you all next time